Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. We're going to look at today uh, testing the ignition systems on the 350 up through 750 saws. They all use the same parts. You've got a coil that goes underneath the starter cover here, right by the flywheel. And you've got a transformer that's mounting over the spark plug. So the coil is going to generate a lower voltage. The transformer is then going to amplify and fire the spark plug. That's really all it is. So in the <clears throat> mid-70s, this would have been a fairly sophisticated version of electronic ignition as opposed to the single-piece module that we all know today. So keep that in perspective when, you know, you... Sometimes folks are like, well, why the hell did they need to do that? Well, they weren't as good at making components small and compact as they are now. It's really that simple. But what do you do? How do you test all this stuff? Well, there's one tried and true way. Prime it. Prime it and pull it over. If it starts or tries to start, your ignition's good. This is also a way to determine some other problems that you could have. These all have an intake boot of one style or another. If you pull it over and it goes vroom, revs up high and drops off, intake boot is blown. If it idles or stumbles and tries to start, your intake boot is probably still intact. So that's one way of going about it. This saw is a known runner and we'll just prove that real quick. I ran it briefly earlier just to make sure that nothing had changed. So, how can you test these components? Well, there's some limited ways. Limited. I will say the most common point of failure I see is the coil and not this transformer. That's not to say that it can't fail, but it almost I would say one out of ten ignition problems is actually that transformer, in my experience. Somebody else may have had a different experience. Cool. Just don't see it. Okay, so the transformer is pretty basic. You've got the two contact points right here, and there's supposed to be that rubber to kind of center the spark plug, but there's a contact point up in there for the top of the plug. That's it. So what are those? If you look back in an old video from a year or two ago, maybe, I uh, had a home light in here where there was a ground tab on both of these, and it was driving me nuts before I figured that out. Because components would test good on another saw. Actually, I was using this saw as the tester for the components, and then I'd get them on the customer saw, and it wouldn't work. Well, there's a ground tab on both of these. It should only be on one on this left hand side. This right hand side is the signal lead from the coil to the transformer. So, important detail there, but how in the world are you going to test this? Because when you take this off, you've got no way to hold a spark plug in there. So, you go low tech. Just make yourself a couple little deals like this and you can gently and I do mean gently pry these contact points up and slip those wires underneath Oop, I don't want to pull that out of the socket so I'm going to bend these tabs over and see if that makes it a little easier The home light tool is long gone. It's obsolete. It was a dummy uh, transformer, basically. Take the plug out, bolt that on, and it had a little uh, neon light in it. And if that light flashed when you pulled it over, you knew your coil was good. And if you didn't have spark, that would lead you to your transformer as being the culprit. Okay, I think I've got enough space there. Again, this is super low-tech, but something that anybody can do in their garage. And this one, seeing as how it's the ground side, I'm going to make it super easy on myself and just set her up right in there. 
Okay. So now you've got some extensions on your leaves, and that's what's important. So then, keep track of which side's which. I'm just going to set them in there. Now, obviously, this isn't perfect. This is pretty, pretty shade tree, but anybody can do it. And we still need a tester. Uh, a good friend of mine, Daryl, sent me the perfect tester. It's the style I like. And it's got the soldered on extension alligator clip. So I'm going to go ahead and ground this out up there because it's convenient and out of my way. And slip the spark plug in there. Now we should see a spark. And we don't. And that's funny. So which part is not contacting properly? That's hilarious. Uh, there might still be paint in there. Oh, Lord. Oh, now that is funny. Is this not... You know, without pressure on it, it may not be... May not be tight enough. I could hear it arcing that time. That's funny. That is funny. I say, I'm not seeing it, but I can sure hear it. So again, this is a bigger pain in the ass test than uh, just priming it. See about the spark plug I put in here that I was using. See if we can see it fire. That is hilarious. I don't know where my contact isn't good, but I wonder if it's those points right there. I can get those tighter. Uh, well, I should still be okay. I really am curious now why the hell this isn't working because it should. God damn it. Stupid damn thing. I'm out of terminals the right size to crimp on for that would fit on here. So I'm trying to rely on a nice little press fit, and we see how that's going. This is an impromptu video. There we go. It was sparking down in there until that came loose. So if you look hard enough in a home light manual, that's exactly what they show you doing, is putting these extensions on. Now. A small set of the alligator clips that would go in here would be probably easier, but you work with what you got. Let me say this is an impromptu. Came home to another another email about testing these ignitions, and honestly, I get tired of typing the same thing over and over and over again. That's where some of the inspiration for some of these videos comes from is that way I can reply with a video link as opposed to typing the same thing for the 150th time so thank you Daryl by the way this is 
extremely versatile and will get well used. So, what did we prove with that test when we got the plug to spark after all that diddling around? Nothing, other than it has spark. You could prove that with the primer test. So you haven't gained a whole lot here. Not a whole lot at all. Because if it didn't spark on the prime or doing it this way, you still don't know if it's a transformer or if it's the coil. And since neither one are easy to find, you don't want to buy the wrong one. So, if you don't have a neon lamp testing tool, what do you do? Well, there's one trick, and it's super, super backyard hillbilly style. Lick two fingers, put one on each tab, and pull it over. You'll feel a tickle. Make sure your switch is on, of course. Okay. Now I can feel that. It's not like grabbing an HEI Chevy when you got a bad plug wire. That just is unpleasant. Anybody who's done that knows. This is more... Don't push the transformer contact out like that. I was trying to hold this tight. This is more of just a tickle. I mean, it almost feels like well, I don't know. I can't explain it. It feels like a little bolt running up my finger right there. But it's not, oh God, I'm going to fry. You know, it's just that. You can feel it. Now, you don't want to be grounded out to anything. Because if you ground yourself out, that's like putting the switch on. So you've got to get it yourself at an angle where you're just touching those contacts. And about that fast, a little quicker, and you'll feel it. That will tell you something. If you get that, your coil is good. If you don't, your coil isn't. So, process of elimination there. Now, I kind of wanted, I wish I hadn't taken those off yet. I kind of want to try, since we're here, since we're already doing this, let's see if these go back on without too much hassle and heartache here. Digital multimeters aren't real good at capturing uh, minute amounts of voltage uh, that are only there for a short period of time. At least not the real cheapo ones. Like if you're trying to test the excuse me, turn signals on your truck from the 7 pin trailer port or something like that. Those cheap multimeters don't read them real well. They don't have time to range themselves and, and figure out what it is they're sensing before it's gone. Okay, that's the ground science. I don't care if it touches. Now I'm going to hope that my old pal Fluke here will be a little bit... A little bit more sensitive. Okay. Now, can I get these in here where they'll stay without too much hassle rooting? And where they're not touching each other. You know, all the dumb stuff. I think that ought to be bare wires. What the hell is that? Is that 25 volts? Or is it a .025? Oh, Alright. Alright. Too minute in that range. So I'm going to say it was the .00 or 0 0.025, 0 0.036. And it looks like the longer you let it set, the better reading you're gonna get. I don't know. I'm not seeing any real logic to the variations there unless I've got 
something not loose, and I don't think I do. Whatever, you should see something. See, that one went all the way to 0.03, and I can't tell you why it's higher there than it was before. I think that might be a more reliable test if you have a good meter that you can range appropriately. And in this case, it's again, it appears to be a very minute voltage. So that tells you exactly how much work the transformer has to do to make one of these things run. So in recap, if you don't have a nice fluke, hopefully your meter is sensitive enough. If you happen to have the old style, the manual with a needle, I mean, since that actually operates on voltage of some sort, you know, it would probably register that more accurately, or at least be more sensitive to it. But that worked. So if you can see voltage as you pull the engine over, I would have to go out on a limb and assume you're going to be okay. But again, the more simple test is pour some damn fuel, just a little bit, down in the cylinder and see if she fires. Now, if you're working on a saw that hasn't run in decades, it might be worth it to leave that switch off and put a little prime down in there and pull it over a couple times to lube everything before you immediately go to a dry fire, but... Yeah. So that's how I start with one of these things. I'll try priming it. If it doesn't fire, I will take this transformer off, inspect the spark plug, inspect the, inspect the transformer if it looks good. I'll do the two finger test and pull it over. And again, you will feel it. And it's not going to shock you out of your shoes, but you will feel it. And if it's not there, you don't get that voltage, I move on and replace the coil. It's worth it to inspect and make sure you don't have one of those weird situations where the wiring has been, you know, messed with. The manuals are pretty clear on what goes where, so, you know, take a peek at that real quick before you drop 70 or 80 bucks on a coil or whatever you end up needing, but, yeah, that's how I go about it for the uh, two-piece ignition system, 350 to 750. Hope it helps.